What's up everybody, Safe Moon Mark here. You've probably heard people talk about the difference between coins like Bitcoin or BNB and tokens like Safe Moon or Shiba Inu. In this video, we'll be taking an in-depth look at tokens, what they are, how they work, how wallets operate, and the fact that wallets do not actually hold your coins. Hopefully this video will help facilitate your understanding of DeFi and how all the new projects in the space really work. Smart contracts are a fancy word for code written on a blockchain, like on Ethereum or on Binance Smart Chain. Once written, this code cannot be changed, which gives it a lot of appeal for use cases such as creating currencies or running many types of applications. You can write a smart contract to do many things, but a popular choice lately has been to develop a specific kind of smart contract, tokens. Not just any code can be turned into a token. If you're going to create a token on top of a blockchain, you must write the code in a specific way to tell the blockchain that the contract you are writing is indeed a token and not some random application. What separates tokens like SafeMoon from other smart contracts is the existence of a few specific functions that the blockchain needs to call in order to interact with the token properly. Some of these should seem intuitive, but here are the essential functions every token needs to have in order to be tradable the way we are used to with SafeMoon. Tokens can have more code and more functions than this, but not any less. We need the name of the token, the symbol, which is the ticker, such as BNB, ETH, ADA. We need the decimals, which is the level of precision of the token, how many decimal places it has. Since most co smart contracts use whole numbers, we need a way to know where the decimal is to allow people to have fractions of tokens. If decimals is set to zero, there will be no decimal places and the coin can only be traded in whole numbers. We need the total supply of the token. How many tokens are there in existence? For SafeMoon, this would be one quadrillion. Then we need two functions. One of these is balance of, which returns the balance of SafeMoon, for instance, of any address you give it. This is how wallet applications show you the number of tokens you own. They call this function and pass in your public key, your receiving address, as an input. Then we need the transfer function. Transfer takes tokens and moves them from one address to another address. This is how the concept of buys and sells happen. A buy is nothing more than a transfer of tokens from a liquidity pool, and a sell is nothing more than a transfer of tokens to a liquidity pool. Whoever calls transfer can only move the tokens associated with their public key. They cannot move tokens from anybody else's address. Using these functions and a few others, the blockchain is able to recognize the smart contract as a token, and they can call all the necessary functions needed to interact with it. Let's take a look at SafeMoon's code to see how they built themselves up as a token. As we scroll through their source code, we can see all the essential functions we had just talked about. Instead of going over these functions again, I want to take everyone's attention over to this line of code. This variable called rowned is what the balance of function calls on whenever a wallet or an exchange asks the blockchain how many SafeMoon you own. Your SafeMoon only live inside this variable. Your SafeMoon do not exist on a wallet, they don't exist on an exchange, they don't exist anywhere else. This variable is typed as a mapping between addresses and whole numbers. The address is your public key your receiving address. The number that your address is mapped to is the number of SafeMoon that you have been sent from other addresses. Buying tokens is not as traditional as buying other assets. There is no token dealer. You can only have someone else transfer tokens from their address to yours using the transfer function. When a user buys SafeMoon traditionally, they interact with an exchange such as PancakeSwap and they must pay the right amount of BNB in order to have PancakeSwap transfer you SafeMoon from their wallet, the liquidity pool. When a transfer happens, the transfer amount is deducted from the sender's balance and added to the recipient's balance inside of that our owned variable that we saw before. All a wallet does is store your public private key. It asks the blockchain what your balance is using your public key and it calls the transfer function for you using your private key. So all you have to do is press a few buttons and the magic just happens. If you know your private key, whatever the 12 word seed phrase compiles into, you do not need to use a wallet interface such as Trust Wallet or MetaMask at all. You could view your balance and send your tokens from a number of different resources, whether it be on a classic terminal screen or even through BSC scan. 
if you go on a BSC scan, you can see and do pretty much everything that Trust Wallet does. It's just not as pretty and user friendly. On BSC scan, you have access to every contract on the Binance smart chain. If I were to deploy a smart contract myself, I could go here and call all the different functions I wrote. I can go to SafeMoon's contract, click on read, go to the balance of function and paste in my receive address, and it returns the number of SafeMoon I own. You'll notice you can't buy or sell SafeMoon with other tokens directly on BSC scan. You can only do that when interacting with a dApp like PancakeSwap or a centralized exchange. PancakeSwap has several smart contracts that allow you to swap different tokens for one another. These smart contracts aren't tokens themselves. They are just code that runs the necessary functions to operate liquidity pools, allow for staking, and of course, exchanging different currencies at a fair market value. This is all a wallet does. It asks the blockchain these questions for you, so you do not need to manually do so. Your wallet does not hold your coins. Your coins only belong to your public key address and can only be sent away using your private key. Trust Wallet stores your private key, your 12 words, for you. But if you do not like using wallets and wanted to move your coins around manually, you would need to know your private key in order to prove to the blockchain that you are who you say you are and not an imposter. If you try to call the transfer function but do not provide the correct private key, the transfer will fail. This is why the burn wallet for SafeMoon can earn tokens all day, but it can never sell them or move them back into circulation because the private key for this wallet does not exist. Trust Wallet and MetaMask are decentralized, which means you are anonymous and nobody but yourself knows your private key. And for this reason, nobody but yourself is liable if you mess up or lose your funds somehow. Your key is not stored in a database anywhere online. It's stored locally on your phone or your computer. It's a give and take. You gain extra privacy and security at the risk of making a mistake and losing your money with no hope of getting it back. Centralized exchanges such as BitMart or Binance use wallets very differently. Robinhood, for example, does not actually give their users a real public key at all. Instead, they are the actual sole owners of all the cryptocurrency held on their platform. When a user buys some Bitcoin on Robinhood, the Bitcoin does not actually move from one address to their address. Instead, Robinhood just updates their database to reflect how much of their Bitcoin you have access to. The Bitcoin is never really yours. However, with centralized exchange wallets, you may be compensated if your funds are stolen because you do not own your private key. Therefore, the company could be liable for your loss. At the same time, however, the owners of an exchange could take all their users' crypto and run because they have full control over all the funds. This doesn't happen often, but it actually happened very recently in Africa. And it's the reason I, I personally prefer using decentralized wallets, namely MetaMask. Deciding on which platform to interact with your tokens is important. If you prefer simplicity, you can use wallets on centralized exchanges. If you prefer security and anonymity, you should use decentralized wallets. It's up to you and how far you are willing to go to protect and have full control over your money. Like and subscribe if this helped facilitate your understanding of tokens, what they are, how they work, and how wallets interact with them. If you are new to my channel, be sure to check out my video on liquidity so you can have a better understanding on how these lines of code actually have real world value attached to them. Thank you all for watching, SafeMoonMark out.